talk about sex with me, Melanie Kelly, here on XFM 100.2. We're on a Thursday night, and today I have a special guest with me because she's a female. Because woo so woo. far, <laughs> we've got Emma Hogg here in the studio. Hi, Emma. Hi, Kel. High five. I'm Hi, so happy five. to see you. Yes. <laughs> so and we're also on here. camera as well. So if uh, you're not listening to us, <laughs> yes, but you're seeing us, um, right. I or if you're listening to us, then you can see us because you can go on uh, our Facebook page, which is Let's Talk About Sex on XFM 100.2 with Melanie Kelly. And there you can watch the whole, well, the whole or snippets of our program today. Mm. Exactly. Uh, if also you'd like to send us messages and you want a bit of a more anonymous approach, maybe have a question that you'd like to ask our therapist, you can do that on Let's Talk About Sex on xfm at gmail.com. So today we are going to talk about a topic which I think um, is quite popular, isn't it, Emma? Yeah, I think it's super popular. I think that people don't like to speak about it so openly with the people yes. that it matters to speak yes. about it with. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, I think... So, uh, let me just introduce Emma. Emma is a, is a psychotherapist. That's um, right. And you are, I love this, mm. I love this. You are a life and joy strategist. Hell yeah. And you're also a founder uh, founder of a, a Life I Choose. Exactly. Which I would suppose, knowing that you're a strategist with a life and joy, Obviously, the life you choose should always be a life which is fulfilling, yeah, and which gives you happiness on a on a daily basis. Exactly. So, how can we make our listeners happy today? Uh, we are basically going to describe infidelity and the million dollar question, which I would like to start off with, which I obviously don't expect you to give me, you know, the full answer now because I think the answer is. Mm-hmm. is long. Yeah. Yes. It's, I it's, think it's, we could go on for days and days yes. and days talking um, about uh, this. But the question is, why do people in relationships cheat on their partner? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Tell me. Okay. Uh, why? So usually we think that a person cheats because they're unhappy, like because something's like unfulfilling in their so relationship. So they're not unhappy. So they don't cheat because they're unhappy. It could be that they're unhappy in their relationship. It could be that there are things that aren't fulfilling them. Like totally. Okay. Um, but one, one of the things that you wrote okay, yeah. there is that people cheat to feel alive mm-hmm. because um, they, they, they want to feel alive. Yes. Okay. So this is, this is the key, I believe, to unlocking infidelity and what it means. Okay. So whenever Did you... Did we start from the end here? Uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, totally it. cool. It's okay. totally, you see, it's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> Emma's, Emma's way of, of, of doing the notes has a beautiful chart. I want to show it to the people maybe who can, who can see us. They can see it. Can they see it? Beautiful chart. chart. Okay. So basically the question is why do people cheat? And people cheat because, because the norm is this. The norm is this. He's unhappy. Mm. She's unhappy. Yeah. And and people um, cut, you know, they, they, it, it's cutthroat. He, he, he cheated, then he's out. She cheated, then she's out. Yeah. Whereas I believe it is way more complex. Yes, totally. Than that. Totally. Okay. It's really, so really shall we start? Yes, yes. Let's start. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so we're going to explore. Okay, yeah. why people cheat. And you, the first thing you, 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 you told me about when we discussed this was that the humans have six, uh, there are six human needs. Can okay. you go so there? So let's, let's just go, go to the, the, the yeah. point of feeling alive, right? Fideik. So whenever you speak to somebody who's having an affair, you will always get in touch with this feeling. Like when you ask them about their affair, like and what's happening, you'll get in touch with this feeling of... I feel exhilarated. Yes. I feel excited. Yes. You know, like I feel, and it's this sense of just aliveness that yes. usually they wouldn't have felt for a very a long, long time. time. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's not the reason that people cheat. Like, it's not like, oh, I had an affair because I wanted to feel alive. No. Okay? There's like Nobody millions. would know. Yeah. Yes. There's millions of reasons. Yes. Like re- mil- millions of things you could do. Yes. To feel, to alive. feel alive. Of course. Okay. But it's sort of like a byproduct. It's something that comes out of the affair. Yes. So yes. in order to understand this feeling of being alive better, I think the first place we need to go is to our six human needs. Okay. Okay. So all human behavior, okay, everything we do on a daily basis is related to our need to meet these six areas of life. Okay. Okay. So I'll go through the six quickly, but 
for today for today's recording we only need to focus on three okay okay so let's not Deal. make it too complicated let's not make it complicated cool I love complicated though <laughs> okay but we'll try to yes, yes. just simplify yes. it cool okay yes. So the first one is certainty. Certainty. Okay. So that is a basic human need. Exactly. Certainty. We all need certainty. So routine. We all need a routine. In exactly. fact, with babies, the first thing they tell you is give them a routine. Exactly. So yes. we need routine. It's one of the reasons we get married because we know like, okay, I'm going home to the same person every day. It's routine. And I know who I'm going to be sharing bills with. And okay. I, you know, responsibilities. So marriage is part of the routine, obviously. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The second human need is uncertainty. So it is a human need, having uncertainty in Definitely. your life. Definitely. What happens when you don't have uncertainty in you your life? You get really bored. You get really bored. You get really, really bored. So and, and okay, so let's explain what we mean when we say uncertainty. Okay. Because maybe people hearing us will say, Emma, what do they mean by uncertainty? Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But sure. for me, having uncertainty in, in life would be the excitement of surprise, the idea of surprise, the idea of something happening yeah. um, which, which is out of the routine. Exactly. So it's putting yourself in a totally new situation. Okay. Exactly. So, for example, if you're bored or not passionate mm-hmm. about a job, mm-hmm. for example, yeah. uh, but there's a routine in it, mm-hmm. but that routine has become detrimental to you, mm-hmm. you need to then go and find a new job, get out of your safe For example, space. so what you're saying is like, for before example, I was meeting my need for certainty and my job gave yes, me that. Yes. But then it got, I was meeting my need for certainty so much that I ended up not meeting my need for uncertainty. uncertainty. Exactly. So, Bomba. and how can we obviously go, uh, what what do you suggest as uncertainty? I mean, I, I have here like a new job, meeting new people, traveling. Are there a lot of couples, Emma, that that end up in a relationship where they are bored because... Because of this uncertain, the lack yeah. of uncertainty. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And I think sometimes, um, a lot of the time, in relationships, there'll be like a lot of rules, like kind of, if you talk to that person, you know, that makes me feel very uncomfortable, so don't talk to that person. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, no, you're not going abroad on your own. Are you crazy? Like, yes. we go abroad as a couple. Yes. You know, and this stuff. Why are you going out of, tonight? Why are you meeting like, your why friends? Why are you going without me? Why do you go a day to go so without me? Why, uh, yes. Exactly. Yes, yes. And that boxes you yes. in, right? Yes. And then yes. you're locked in certainty. Yes. yes, yes. Exactly. And obviously then the certainty becomes <gasps> suffocating. Exactly. Okay. And s- uncertainty is what makes sexual excitement spark. And that was yeah? where I was going to, obviously. Yeah, um, cool. Because, We're on the same wavelength. Know, um, but, but before <laughs> we go that, we, before we go that, so so um, let's recap a bit. Mm-hmm. So we've got these human needs, two of which are certainty and uncertainty. Now, you exactly. did mention the others, but we said we're, we're, we're going to go... Yeah, the, the, o- the others are just significance, love and connection. You can look them up. The, and then, so basically, the first four... Everybody meets. You will yes. find a way to meet them no matter what. Meaning having certainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. significance. What do you mean by that? Significant. Significance is I need to be valued. Okay. Okay. I need you to see me. I need to know you value me. Okay. And you get that either through your colleagues at work or your friends. Exactly. You or... can get it by being amazing in your job. Yep. Uh, yes. And, but Always remember that these needs, every need is two-sided. So There's it the can be constructive positive exactly. and the destructive. Exactly. So like my need for significance could make me into a total like, can you say it? No. No. <laughs> it can make me into um, um, a, um, like, um, like uh, yes, it, it can, always needs to be about me. Exactly. Yeah? Like, uh, uh, yes. Okay. We got you there. We okay. got you. Um, so, so. Okay, no, I get you. So, so then you there's the, the constructive, there's the negative, and there's the positive. Okay, mm-hmm. and then the one I loved, which is growth. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a human need. But I think that growth is actually somewhere that a lot of people, um, they just stop yeah. growing. Yeah, We've... a lot of people, and you know, if you're listening, you know, I need you to look at your life. And how do they grow, Emma? How do people grow? Well. Kids do this all the time, right? Yeah. Where kids are constantly putting themselves yeah. in new situations, at least yeah. so long as we encourage it and we don't yes. make it all about pass or fail. Because if you yes. make it about pass or fail, then, like, a, then a kid's going to stop yes. trying to put themselves. But it's like 
I don't know, like a lot for a lot of people, it's like, okay, so I get my degree, I get my job, I get married, and then what? And then what? Yeah? So I have the job, I have the wife, I have whatever I need. And maybe, okay, I still travel, but I always go to the same kind of places yes. or whatever. Yes. And it's like, the thing is, like, growth and contribution are our two, there, there are spiritual needs in okay. reality. So there are human needs, but they're what make us, these are the two needs that make us super alive. That where we evolve as people. Exactly. It's where we're constantly like growth. Rediscovering the, ourselves, parts of ourselves. Exactly. It's uh, the expansion of yourself. So you yes. do something that you never knew you could do. Yes. And then you're like, damn, damn like, I cool. That. Like, I do that, Fantastic. you know, like. Very good. Exactly. Like you coming on the radio show. Yeah. That's another one of your bucket list. <laughs> exactly. <yes? laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So we were talking, therefore, about this um, certainty and uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so a destructive part of uncertainty, okay, apart from um, what you were talking about here is drinking too much, having, and, and, and this is really right, uh, having destructive arguments with loved ones. Mm-hmm. I feel that when somebody is bored in a relationship. Mm, they push the boundary. And not, and not necessarily because they're bored with their partner. Sometimes they're bored with they're, themselves. They're, it's exactly. It's yeah. not because they don't want to be with their partner anymore, but they are maybe so bored within themselves that they take it out on the partner. Yeah. But another one that then you, obviously, you know, we discussed is you break boundaries. Yeah. So like the, the one you just said of the pushing is like you're pushing the boundaries, right? Like I'm going to yes. push you, push you, push you, push yes. you, push you and see, yes. are you going to break? Are you yes. going to leave me? Yes. And that creates uncertainty. Yes. But then yes. you can actually break the boundary yourself and you can, you know, sleep with someone else. Or and that is where you have the affair. Exactly. And obviously then why? You have an affair. It's someone new. It's a new experience. You're putting yourself and, into uncertainty. And you're putting yourself into uncertainty. Which and, we need. And you kind of also become a different person. Yeah, you exactly. With Around the, different people, you feel different, right? If you're, yes. So yeah. another, it's like friends. I mean, one friend brings out a part of you. Exactly. And then sometimes you meet another friend who's, you know, new and maybe from a certain place and, and you kind of uh, find yourself uh, acting more like that person. Yeah. So, so Like around you, you're so animated. Like that. <laughs> then it becomes easy for me to tap into to, that side that, of myself. I'm just like, yeah, let's move. Good. Let's so whoever comes, comes here. Yeah. You know? Yes. But if you're around yes. someone who's always like, quiet. Yes. And like, I sit back and I'm like, yes. you know, and then yes. it, it's difficult it's to the stay energy. up there because it's like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, so let's talk about this. So we've understood why we break the boundaries. Okay. Because there's this idea of certainty. So you might get a bit bored and, and you break the boundary and you have the affair. Mm-hmm. Now, and we were talking about the motive. Um, the, not, not the motive. It's the don't, don't know why feeling. Yes. When yeah. you have an yeah, affair. Yeah. I don't know why I did it. For a lot of people, I mean, you do come across people who just have one affair after another after another and they feel very entitled to it. And that's usually a significant thing. It's like, okay. it's like, a well, you know, like I've accomplished this much, so I'm, you know, I can do it like, you know, whatever. OK, so there is a bit there can be that. But I'm sorry, okay. you go. OK, no, no, because <laughs> we're actually already running out of time. I can't believe that it has gone by so quick. I know. So um, it doesn't matter. You're here. You're here. You're still here. You're coming, you know, you're coming back. So we're going to go for a, a, a short break. OK. And uh, we'll have a song out there for you, too. And when we come back, uh, we'll talk about this. I will talk about uh, what we call the digital age. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk and we'll, ac- we'll, we'll try and explore the, the actual transgression. Mm-hmm. The actual exactly. transgression, the, uh, the affair. Yeah. Okay, Emma? Awesome. Good. So far, cool. so good. Super cool. High five. Yay. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Everybody, this is Melanie Kelly with Let's Talk About Sex here on XFM 100.2. And I am joined in the studio with Emma Hogg. Hi. Hello. Hello again. Whoop, whoop. And I love that. I love that. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop. So basically, we are talking about infidelity and why do people cheat? Okay. Yeah. And so far, we've talked about the person who actually co- is in the affair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and why that person does it most of the time because there's the, uh, this element of uncertainty. Now, let's go to the other end. Yeah. 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 And how about 
um, the other person who's on the other end, the one who is cheated upon. Exactly. There is obviously hurt. Oof. And there's a lot of betrayal. Exactly. Okay. It's a trauma. It is a trauma. And I think one of the first questions that people ask is how, how? Could yeah. You? How could they do this to me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we were talking and you mentioned the, the 1000 cuts of the digital age. What's that? Can yeah. you explain it. Okay. So basically in the past, like a, a woman would sort of, or a man would sort of, well, usually it was a woman in the past because... Nowadays, women have much more opportunity to cheat than we used to. Of course. So we're talking in the past. We're not being, uh, you know, sexist or whatnot. But obviously, as you're saying, in the past, uh, many women would stay home. Yeah. Now, yeah. And obviously, if you now stay home, there's we, no opportunity. Exactly. Now we travel for work, you know, and yes. we're working all day or yes. whatever. So yes. there's, there's yes. you know, there's we're the more of the opportunity. People. Exactly. exactly. Um, and plus, we're earning our own income, so yes, it's like yes. it makes it easier. So you were saying in the past, yeah. So in the past, um, a woman could suspect that her husband was having an affair because maybe she would find like some lipstick on his collar, or she would come across like a receipt in his pocket or perfume. something. Perfume, yeah, perfume or something. Give okay, away. and she would, you know. Nowadays, you can have those, um, mm. like what are they called? Like, uh, like pointers, hints, exactly. clues, hints, yeah. clues, like. But what we do is we go digging. Yeah. Because there's the phone. The phone. There's the iPad. There's yes. the laptop. So you go digging and you can find practically like, you know, in, in chronological time, order. Chronological order of like how it happened, when it happened, where it happened, when he lied to you, what he was lying about. Or she. You know, or she. Or she. Or she. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so um, make sure you delete those messages now. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is what the this is this is a saying by Esther Perel. Yes, you know yes. Esther Perel. Um, you were talking about, it and I found that fascinating. Tell us about it. She's she's one of my mentors, and she's she's amazing. Yes, like she's she, yes. she's worked yes. with thousands of couples going through yes um, infidelity. She's the same one that Ken last week spoke about, and he went to a workshop of hers. Awesome, fantastic. Cool, cool. Yes. I know Ken. He's yes. cool. Yes, I know. <laughs> he knows you too. He's a new cool. <laughs> so basically, she uses this saying. She says, you know, it's a thousand cuts because you're not just, you know, suspecting that your husband's having an affair and then clarifying it or your wife is having an affair. You're you suspect and then you and then you find it. And yeah. then and, and then you, how long? And then, you know, OK, exactly. I, I it's get cut off the cut, cut off the cut, cut. off the cut, off the cut. So once you found the messages, you know how long it's been going on when he said he was working late. And OK, yeah. OK. Yeah. okay. All right, so if you've been um, uh, cheated on, yeah, okay, um, uh, obviously then they would ask their partner questions. And most of the time, I think they'd ask questions like, why did you do it? Mm. Or, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. or they ask themselves that. Yeah. How do you think they should... Um, explore it? How do you think they should deal with it? How is this dealt with? Well, I think why did you do it is a good question. Um, but most probably not that, even the person would know why. But, well, probably not. But uh, the thing is, like, I think the, the worst questions are like, where, when did you do it in our bed? Like, um, were you thinking of me when you were with person. him? Or like, uh, was she better than me? Um these kinds of questions, because then, okay, you're, you're curious, you have the question, but do you really want the answer? Yes. Do yes. you want to be carrying that, that around? That knowledge, it's like sometimes the less you know, it, the, the, the better. Yeah. Okay, so what would be the role of a therapist here? I mean, would you suggest that if a, a person um, uh, is found cheating, do you suggest that there should be, you know, a therapist involved. In I think that's totally up to the couple. Yes. I, usually what you find is the ones who, the types of couples who come to a therapist are different to the types of couple who go to a lawyer. Yes. Yeah, the types of couple who go to the lawyer are like, they're ready, they're done. They're done. Like, you know, it's like they, they were, usually they were dead before the affair happened. The affair was just that push. Yes. You know? Yes, it was the gateway. The yeah. gateway out. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this here. Okay. I'm, I'm pointing at her nice drawing. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Okay. And, what, you know, uh, it is, and you said it is in the transgression that we discover the meaning of the behavior. What does that mean? What, what do you mean by okay. that? Okay. Because usually, like, we would ask, like, 
if you ask anybody like um you know kind of you tell somebody they had an uh, this guy had this woman had an affair and they'll tell you oh like maybe there was something wrong with the marriage yes. you know whatever yes. and um in therapy that that happens sometimes where you know like the therapist will look for um okay let's see what we can people fix yes. in your marriage yes um but the truth is like there's problems in every, every marriage, marriage. But so not, if you look at every marriage there's a problem know, in every marriage there's everything is incomplete imperfect we are incomplete and imperfect you ah, know i get you so you're saying like if a person uh, is unfaithful okay cheats and you go to a therapist and they say let's explore the problems you're saying hey show me one partnership or relationship that does not have problems So yeah, you're going to look for it, you're going to find it. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, exactly. What I'm saying is it's sort of, it's not that it's a bad place to look. No. It's okay to look, but it's a bit like, it's the easiest place to look. Okay, this is your little drawing, yeah, right? Yeah, this is my the, drawing of the, like the, of the, light. the, the drunk well, man looking for his keys in the street light. So he could have lost his keys like in the darkness, but it's easier to search in the street light, right? Because yes. that's where the light is. But he's so drunk. It's like, but it, yeah, so it's like, okay, you had an affair, Let's look at what's wrong in your marriage. I mean, okay, but there could be something wrong which led to the obviously affair. Obviously, there's going to be something in the marriage, like, you know, kind of there always is, you know, but kind of like, let's look at the transgression itself. Let's look at the person who had the affair. Like, why? Like, why now? Why him or her? Like, Were you looking for something? What did you get from it? What did you find? What did you find out about yourself? How did it feel? You know? Ah, These so kinds of questions. Ah, so the first place to look, to look at is not the couple and the marriage and what's wrong. Yeah. It's the person. And the person needs to really sit down and think, okay, why did you do it? What yeah. was inside? And not in a way like... There's something wrong with you. We need to fix you. Not, okay. not at all. Like, okay, okay. The, we're gonna we're gonna pretend the marriage isn't broken, but you're broken. No, no. Okay. Like, but kind of, you know, yes, like, yes, kind you of. Look, um, you look at the person and you see why. What what is missing in the person's whatever life? Uh, yeah, uh, that that needed to look for this because it is. I think I would say that that um, uh, cheating. It is an exhilarating um, uh, experience. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um, so, and you talked about, you gave, in fact, in fact, you gave this example. And in fact, I asked you, I said, I said, what's, what's this example? Who are, who are Priya and the trucker guy? Ah, yes, yes. And, and, and because that makes complete sense. So I'd like you to talk about that. Okay. This is an example that Esther Perel uses and I really like it because I think it captures, um, it captures this essence of, of affairs perfectly. Okay. So the story is about this woman named Priya. She's in her forties. Um, And she's married to this, like, she describes him as, like, really good looking, like, really, like, good looking. This is a book. What is it? It's a book. It's, uh, a, it's a book. It's, it's um, a couple she mentioned, I think, in one of her books. Okay. okay. Um, so it's a real life couple. Yeah, it's a real life couple oh, that she's worked couple. with. But so obviously worked. the names, the oh, names of course, changed. got changed. Okay. Um, so, so, so Priya had an amazing, good looking, gorgeous husband. Yeah, they, they both have good jobs. They make good incomes. They have kids who are... You know, in their teens now, everything's okay, parents okay, blah, blah, blah. And yet, she's, Priya is having an affair. With who? With this <laughs> trucker guy. So trucker this, guy. this guy covered in tattoos, long, messy hair. So somebody completely n- not the person she would ever go for. Well, yeah, like not a person she would marry, definitely. Like okay. kind of not a person who would fit into her social... Like yes. click, you know, yes, so it's yes. it's sort of it doesn't really make sense. And in fact, what Esther found was that like when she was with Priya, you know, she she knew it like it just didn't make any sense. And she was yes. if her husband found out, she would she would lose everything. She would lose And she probably everything. would never choose one over the other. Never, no, never she choose loved the, her husband. And like, she would not lose the, lose everything for the trucker guy. So no. why why would she do that? Why would she Well when you do some digging, okay, mm-hmm. into Priya's into Priya's life, like what you find about Priya is she's a very good girl. Okay. Now I know she's a woman, but I'm using the word girl, girl. because we learn our behaviors in, in childhood. Okay. So she always learned to do the right thing. Ah. So you always put somebody else's needs on top of yours. Okay. Okay. So it's like, 
I'm going to please my friend first. What do you want to do? Anything you want to do is good for me. So she became a very good wife. wife. A very, she was an amazing daughter, a very good daughter, very dutiful. Okay? Good mother. And then a very good mother. But when you're always doing this, right? If Mel, if I'm always asking you, what do you need? How do you feel? Who is meeting what your do needs? You want? How do I know what I, I need? Want. It's not just about meeting my needs. It's just that I don't know what I need. So what I don't know what I what, want. What we're trying to tell our listeners out there, that although it's very nice and it's, 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 a, it's a great um, a characteristic to have. To, to, to be caring. To, to be caring and yeah. to understand what your partner or your friends, but here we're talking about relationships, what your partner will like, that you lose yourself. Am I understanding correctly? Yeah. Yeah. You lose yourself and you lose what you want and what you need by always putting the needs of, of your partner before you. And exactly. if you were brought up always like that, it might actually feel like you're being selfish. Yeah, if you actually, if you meet, actually your needs, meet your exactly, needs. Exactly, exactly. And because, because I think also it's also a part of our religion as well, eh? mm. that to always serve the other. Yes, We're always yes, here to yes. serve. You're meant to be selfless. Selfless kind of and yeah. serving. And it's a beautiful characteristic. Yes. But, but it doesn't mean not meeting your own needs. Exactly. And see, you are more selfless when you meet your needs. Yes. Like way more, because then you're actually willing to give. When you don't meet your needs, then you need other people to fulfill your needs. And like this, if you meet your own needs, you are giving power back to yourself exactly so back to Priya yes okay so Priya was always good, had this good girl yeah yeah because I'm liking the story you know? so so when <laughs> I you want to know how it ends <laughs> so when you look at the transgression right when okay. you look at Priya cheating on her husband yes her beautiful husband with this perfect life. guy like yes. right okay um I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it in like, oh, kind yeah, of, yeah, you know, yeah. like, it's not her yes, style. not her style. Kind of. We're not saying anything um, about Tracker guys <laughs> for crying out loud, you know. It's just not her. Not her style. You, know? um, you, you get in touch with this rebellion uh-huh. that Priya never bad had. Boy. Her, she was a uh-huh, bad but girl. He, but yes, he was the he bad was a ba- boy. Yeah, exactly. He was a bad boy who around him, she could be the bad, bad girl. Bad girl. Right? And she could have her needs met because in that situation, she definitely wasn't thinking about anyone else's needs. Of course, she was only thinking of her needs. Yeah. Rightly so. So, um, and then how did the story end? I don't know how it ended. Did she go back with the husband? Um, I, I have no or idea. Did she I, drive I imagine off into the no, sunset. No, no, she, she definitely, guy. no, no, she definitely <laughs> wouldn't have have ended up with him because it was too much of a fantasy based thing. She yes. didn't want a future with him. Yes. I, I don't know whether she she told her husband about what was happening or not. Um, uh-huh. I don't know, but I think I think what she wanted was to stay with her husband. Yes, I would imagine so. That once yeah. she came down from the sh- boom, yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah. The sh- but also, what, what I wanted you to mention this story because the story because it's a real life story because um, I, I would say that that most affairs do would this would happen with most affairs that they go for something which again takes us back to what we started the show with because the it aliveness. brings an aliveness. Now, with yes. regards to Priyad, brought out this rebelliousness that she was brought up with being a good girl so she wanted to be a rebellion but you explore the transgression and this is the I really want to mention this before we go on break like this is so important in therapy what is important is the integration so what I mean by this is if Priya felt that she couldn't meet her needs within the marriage okay because she needed Rebellion was yes. just not okay for her. Yes. Okay. And this was about her. Yes. It, it wasn't it, her husband well, ever husband. saying, no. no, I don't want to meet your needs. We need to integrate that rebellious nature into Priya, that she is still lovable even when she meets her needs, needs. even when she's selfish. So, in fact, because we are going to go for a, for a short break, in fact, my, my next question was going to be, so for all those people out there who... Um, have don't have their needs met because even if you want to cheat to feel alive, it's because you need your your you you want your needs met. Your, for example, I need to feel alive. Mm-hmm. I want to have my cer- uncertainty. Yeah. So, um, I think we we're gonna have some tips, aren't we? We have some tips. Yeah. On how 
to feel the uncertainty within a relationship that you have been in for a number of years because you can still feel alive yes. and still feel an element of uncertainty even if you've been with your partner for a very long time. Yes. So right after the break, okay, don't go anywhere and uh, we'll we'll talk about that. Ooh. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, to let's talk about sex here on XFM 100.2 with me, Melanie Kelly, and I am with Emma. Hello. And we are talking about why people cheat, infidelity. We've spoken about a lot of things. And if the listeners, yes, if they have joined us just now, if you've joined us just now, you can actually go on our Facebook page. Let's talk about sex on XFM 100.2 with Melanie Kelly. And there I will be uploading snippets of the show. Mm -hmm. So if you've missed the first and the second part, you will find them there. Now, the last part here, we're going to talk about, okay, so... One of the one of the, the the people, okay, within the relationship, has cheated. Mm-hmm. Now, there's two ways out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some separate. Yeah. Uh, but I loved what you wrote. You said, uh-huh. "I love, I love this." Some separate. Uh-huh. Most mm-hmm. do stay together. Is that? Is that? Is that? Um, uh, proven? Is that? Is that researched? Yeah. I mean, from the research. Yes, I think it is proven. <laughs> I'm pretty positive it is proven. But like kind of what they find is that but most even couples maybe do your stay experience together. as a therapist. Yes, yes, yes. You you find that most together. couples do stay together. And this together. is what this is what Esther Perel has found as well and a lot of other therapists working with. Obviously, I mean it could be that that it's skewed, you know, like because obviously the clients who um separate don't go to therapists they yes, go to, and a, a, to lawyers a, a few weeks ago i actually quoted um estelle perez where she said that um, infidelity is no longer um a, a breaker within the relationship yeah yeah that that um obviously uh, okay i know and i don't want to offend the people out there who are listening who are probably very adamant about it and uh, because I hear a lot of people say, no, if he or she uh, is unfaithful to me, that's it, gone, yeah. you know, it's over. But I think it comes from a mental, uh, the mentality that you feel that if a person is, is cheating on you, it is because they want somebody else. And we've tried to explain in the show here that sometimes you have to really explore why that person what is missing in their life yeah you know because 99 percent of the time if you go up to the person who has cheated and you tell them okay would you leave your partner your long-term partner for this person that you cheated on Mm. I would, you know, no research here I'm just you know just coming out like that but I would say most people would say no yeah I am staying with my long-term partner, yeah, yeah. you know, and then you'd ask them, why did you risk that? Yeah, and they'd say, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is what we've already spoken about. Yeah. You know, transgression, because, we love to break rules. Yes, and this uncertainty, this wanting to feel alive. Yeah. So, some separate, Yeah. okay, and, yeah. and um, they have their divorce. Yeah, or... you, usually you would find that People are like the marriage was already at its end, kind of yes. before this happened, you know, yes. and this was like the final push that yes, yes, you know, they decided okay, it's done, and now, it's not necessarily an unsuccess. It's not necessarily a failure, you know, if they separate. Sometimes no, it's a really you honor the time. Yes, and like I think what is like super important about um, separation is when there was an affair, you know, if a couple's been together for five years, ten years, twenty three years. And there was one affair. There was still, you know, there all was still those other years, years which were of, well, of hopefully great. You know, good, like you know, shared, you shared stuff, children, family, friends, yes. moments, you know. Yes. So to sort of trash it all, you know, based on that, that one, one thing. Yes. You know, so in in therapy we work with this a lot. You know, like for example, using rituals to end. How to reconcile the couple even after they have separated kind of yeah to, like to, to keep to keep like we would do a ritual for example you know we do a ritual to to start a marriage yes so you do marriage the whole exactly so you do a ritual to end it so for example one thing you can do is like write a letter to each other okay and say like this is what i really appreciate about you this is what hurt i accept that this is the end 
this is what I'm going to miss. And thank you, you know. Thank you for the children you gave me. Thank you for for the comfort you gave me. Oh, you know, make me sad. You know, whatever, like. <laughs> you make and, me sad. You know? <laughs> you make me sad. Yes, but uh, but it's real. Yeah. It's real because when a relationship comes to the end, it's it's sad in a way. Um, but it's also giving yourself room to grow. Mm-hmm. Because exactly. obviously if the relationship needs to come to the end, it means that you as a person needs to grow in a different yeah. direction. And in a way, like you said, the other free, but you set yourself free. Exactly. Like even more. Yes. Like, and, yes. and this needs to happen as well in relationships. You know yes. how before we mentioned rules yes. and how we tend to like box each other yes. in because we're scared. And this goes back to growth. Yes. Okay. So if I don't let... Let's say we're a couple. Yes. Okay. And I don't let you grow. Okay. Because it's scary if your partner grows. grows. Because what happens if your partner grows and they find out something about themselves. Which does not involve you. Exactly. Or which, or which they feel they can't do without you. Or they, What's going to happen? Fear, right? Are they going to leave me? There's fear. Am I all of a sudden not going to be good enough because they've discovered this new part of themselves? They're all of a sudden successful in one way or another. You know? So sometimes what we try to do to each other is we try to... Hold each other down. But the end result is still going to be the the same in the sense that if your partner is actually going to grow and eventually not, this doesn't happen all the time. But if your partner, if you fear that your partner is going to grow and eventually leave you and you box your partner in, Mm -hmm. ultimately, however, still going to leave you. Then they're really going to want to transgress, right? Exactly. Because because then it's they need to break Break free. free. It's not that they want to grow, you know, and you're growing as well. It's, I can't take this anymore. Anymore. Get off me, like, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, power, girl. Power. (laughs) So, okay, so we said most do stay together. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um and here I'm trying to figure out what you wrote which part of your drawing is. Yeah, there are, like there are two this. different ways that couples yes. stay together. So some of them stay like, you know, out of well it's complicated, I Yes, right? I know. It's complicated. I, know. I, I saw mean, the words marriage. out of duty, out of and, obligation. And not just that, but even it's like it's complex, right? It's yes. not just two people sharing life together. If yes. there's children, children if there's money, yes. if there's businesses, yes. you know, if you've been together for God yes. knows how long, you know, you have everything shared together. Yes. It's not yes. if, if, you know, the one of them hasn't worked for I don't know how many years and they're completely dependent on the other. It's yes. not a simple decision. Yes. So some people sort of. And 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 if a couple decide to stay together out of duty, out of obligation because of all of all of this, mm. I mean, there's no judgment attached to it, yeah. you know, in the sense that... It's complex. It's complex. You yeah. can't say, oh, no, you should... It's, it's complex. Yeah. So, you know, it's to be respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, however, mm. you stay together because you want to build a more joyous relationship. Yes, yes? And in fact, a lot of the time, like, what you find is that the affair sort of brings both of them back to life. Yes. Okay, so it's a little bit like when somebody Because goes, it brings the uncertainty in the relationship. Exactly. So it's a, it's a little bit like when somebody gets a terminal... We are not, not, not telling terminal, people to go when, and have an affair to no, make the relationship no, no. better. And in fact, and in fact this, is the, <laughs> this is the example I want to give. If you get seriously ill with something, okay... Mm-hmm. Um, usually people who get seriously ill and recover, you find that they yes, have this zest new for life. zest for life. Yes, so yes. I wouldn't recommend having an affair, okay? And Esther Perez says this too. She, you don't recommend having an affair as much as you wouldn't recommend getting cancer. Of course. Okay, of like, course. but it doesn't mean that, that like... That once you get it, you, you can't never recover you from it. You can't never recover from it. You know? I get you. And I in fact, you. some couples end up really recovering from it. They have conversations that they haven't had together for... Yes. 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 You know, they, they, they get, explore more. Yes. Exactly. They're the, in this uncertainty. So then they're sexually the, alive again. Exactly. They're sexually and awake. both of them now are in the uncertainty. Not one of them. Yeah. Not the person who's causing the transgression, but both of them. So we're going to give you tips, okay, for the couples out there of how to keep the uncertainty within yeah. the relationship. But I feel like before we do that. Before we do that. I tell think me on, on the topic of like healing the relationship. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's really important that um, the person who's done, who's committed the transgression, okay, the person who's had the affair needs to know that they have to own responsibility. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Like yes, they have yes. to, and it has to be in a way like, not like, oh, I'm so guilty, I feel so guilty, I feel so guilty, I feel so guilty, and then it becomes all about you. Like, it's like, 
I see what I did. I know what I did. I know how much I hurt you. And I'm really sorry for how much I hurt you. Okay. And now I'm here. Okay. Now, how about the other person? Because now we're talking about how you can heal after mm-hmm. an affair. Yeah. So you're saying that you can heal by the person who committed the transgression, okay? The person who cheated owns it. Yes. Owns it, takes responsibility for it, does not try and come up with excuses of why and when. Exactly. Or rather explain it exactly. to try and put it out on the table. Yeah, Now, yeah, how yeah. about, however, the person who was hurt and betrayed? How long does that person have permission mm. to throw it back at the partner? Because I think that that would be one of the worst ones, yeah? yeah. When you've got one partner who is um, solemnly and really, uh, um, uh, you know, sorry for what they did. Yeah. But then the person who was betrayed... keeps throwing it back in the face. I mean, at the beginning, I think it's it's natural. Like, yes. that is going to happen. It's yes. only, you know, yes. but I think if if the person sort of holds on to this for too long, yes. they're not going to recover. Because then it becomes self-destructive. Yes. So basically all the couples who are, are, you know, if you're listening to us and you've been betrayed, you know, and maybe you're going through this right now, there's also a need to understand that when you hold on to the bitterness exactly. of it, then it, you become bitter. Yeah. And it's your quality of life exactly. that diminishes. In fact, the person who's been cheated on needs to work a lot on their on on their sense of joy, on their of growth, on on their self-worth because obviously when when somebody cheats, cheats on you, on it you, makes you sudden, feel like make, you're worthless. Exactly. Like I mean, what's wrong with me? Like why yes. why why yes. him and not me or you know? So Yes. Yeah, they need to take care of themselves big time. Okay, so How do we keep it alive? How do we keep a relationship, um, you know, alive with that uncertainty okay. feeling in it? Okay. Go, tell so, us, tell us. So growth, Reveal. So growth our, our spiritual human need, needs to become central in our lives. Okay. Yeah. And we need to grow as a couple. Okay. So like putting ourselves into situations of uncertainty. So, for example, like a lot of people like to go on date nights. Yes. Which is which is great. And it's, yes. and it, it's good because yes. it gives you that certainty. So it yes. gives you that comfort. Yes. Like, okay, I know that once every two weeks we go out for dinner. Yes. And we, you know, But there's together, still a certain blah, blah, blah. certainty in that. But exactly. That is certainty. Yes. So as a couple, you need to put yourselves into situations of uncertainty. Okay. Okay. So like travel to a country that's like unfamiliar to you, like together and discover okay. yourselves in this new place or... Go and meet new people together and discover each other in this new place, you know? Okay. Um, so uh, going away, maybe if you haven't been on a weekend break together without the kids, you do that. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't been canoeing, go canoeing together. Exactly. That's a really good idea. Like do something scary. <laughs> go do something camping. Like, like whitewater rafting. Or if you're really courageous, do something like skydiving or yeah, something, I did that. you know, like, do, <laughs> you know, you've done that. I've done that, but I doubt my husband will jump off a plane. And But that is another thing. Like you don't always need to grow together. So good yes. for you for doing it. No, on, no. For know, example, like, I know I'm an adrenaline junkie. Huh? Yeah. So, you know, I've done all the bungee jumping. I've done the, you know, jumping off a plane. Okay, cool. So I keep, yeah, I try to keep that. Yeah. But you, and another thing is like grow separately, yes, you know, very like important. do your thing, like go and, and, you know, learn new stuff and travel on your own. And very important to be passionate about life because am I wrong if I say that most probably we're not talking about those relationships where they've actually come to the end, but the relationships where seemingly everything's okay, mm-hmm. all right, like with Priya and the truck driver, you yeah. know, um, where seemingly everything's okay. When a person cheats, um, he would have cheated if his wife were A, B, C or D. Sure. Probably he would have yeah. come to that part of his life, whether he was married with A, B, C or D, he would have done it. Anyway, sure, it's possible. Because it's not yeah, about yeah. the partner, but it's about him or her. Yeah, yeah. So, can you affair proof a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think you can affair proof a relationship. I don't think, I just like you can't divorce proof a relationship. I don't think, I, if you love, you risk. Yes, yeah? yes. 
It's better There's to, no to love and have lost than to have never loved at all. Was exactly. that Shakespeare? I think so. But that's, but that's beautiful because yes. that's the uncertainty. Yes. So, and the more that we don't take each other for granted, the more that I know that you can leave me at any point, the more that keeps me on my toes yes. to be like, I'm going to let this woman know that she's my queen. Yeah. Yes. That, that like I adore her and what she brings to my life. But yes. if I walk in every day and I'm like on my phone, I'm like, oh, Mel, all right. Like, I mean, it sounds like of. my husband. <laughs> <laughs> hey, husband, are you listening? <laughs> you know what I mean? I want like flowers this. tonight. <laughs> and it's okay if that happens yes, a bit. I'm But joking. what I'm saying yes, is, yes. you know what I mean? We need to. Yes, yes, yes. It's in the same way that we become fully alive when yes. we realize that we're going to die one day. Yes. It's the same yes, with our yes, relationships. Yes. We need to remember that they end. So yes. be alive in them. Yes. So, fantastic, Emma. That was great advice that you gave us there. Oh, it was so um, much fun to be here. Oh, 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 I'm going to invite you again, girl. For oh, sure. Thank you for inviting for sure, me. For sure, for sure, for sure. So start preparing <laughs> for the next radio show. Okay. So that's enough for now because I think we're way over our time limit, yes? Um, just about. So we're going to leave you with one last song and we will be back with you next week on Thursday evening. And if you haven't listened to the whole program and you'd like to listen in, then go on our Facebook page. Let's talk about sex on XFM 100.2 with Melanie Kelly. And there you'll find snippets of all the radio show today. So, we tell them good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Like, yes. Thank you for listening. And on. hopefully, you know, some listeners out there, we've brightened their day or made them a bit more um, uh, clear. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Mel. You're welcome. High five. High five. <laughs>